I love Fridays. Crazy news update comes out every Friday on Inside Russia, and today is Friday. This is October 2023rd. We have some news, and let's check them out. I guarantee you will love them. We have a healthy mix today, a little bit of everything, and the news, the star news is 100,000 policemen missing, and I'll tell you why I think this is a ray of hope for Russia. And of course, I'll tell you at the very end. And me singing again? Eh, I don't think so. Uh, perhaps a tiny little bit, just just tiny bit, you know. Howdy, howdy, friends. My name is Konstantin, and welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian, me. October is well underway, and this past week has been full of some crazy news, all right. And I'll jump straight into the news to start filling you in. The first news is on the positive side today. Cultural news. All right, you know, that's a good break from everyday bleak routine of Russian crazy things happening there, you know. So, what's the news about? Well, it's about uh, magic concerts will be held in Moscow. And yeah, that's how they're announced. Magic concerts, no more, no less. Ain't it nice? Let's check out what's in the cultural events menu in the capital of Russia. Hmm. Uh, huh? What? Harry Potter and Disney are coming to Vegas City Hall. Vegas City Hall is one of the largest... Um, shopping malls with a concert venue. Hollywood soundtrack and other multimedia concerts at Lumiere and Zoo Depot venues. The orchestra of dancing pipers playing James Bond movie soundtracks at Vadenha Greenhouse. <laughs> wow, I need some tea. Wait a second. Wait a second. What is going on here? Harry Potter, Disney, Hollywood soundtracks, James Bond movies, music. That's all Anglo-Saxon. That's the English and the evil satanic Americans for you. <sighs> Folks, it's their satanic books and music. You know, Harry Potter, the James Bond soundtracks. And you play that in Russia after two years of brainwashing people against the Americans and against the English? And it's held right in the middle of the capital of Russia, right next to the Kremlin? That's treason! Treason! No, that's just the Russian politicians for you. They curse all the Western on TV, on national TV, but they live in Miami and London. They have their children go on to the Western schools in Moscow and enjoy the concerts of music from Harry Potter, Disney, and James Bond. For the selected few, you know. And for everyone else in Russia, well, it's Solovyov and Maria Zakharova cursing the evil West on the national TV every single day. What a bunch of no good lying bums. Ugh. We're moving on, folks. Um, two news, well, one news, two new brands, how do I say that? Two new um, companies, consumer electronic companies are coming to Russia. They are called Datis and Emerson, Datis Emerson. You know, at first I thought, that's great, you know, uh, because I thought I misread, and it was Emerson. You know, Emerson, the American brand of cheap but reliable electronics. At least it was there in the past, I remember. You know, um, and I read it again, and I did not misread. Emerson, not Emerson. Turns out Emerson and the T's are Iranian household appliance manufacturers. They sell, they manufacture and sell vacuum cleaners, refrigerators, you know, and, and such from Iran. Now, Iran appliances? Iran? 
Iranian appliances, the hell is going on? Turns out that they are negotiating to overtake the manufacturing facilities that Samsung and LG, that's a large South Korean companies, left in Russia when they stopped doing business there in March of 2022. Perhaps it's part of the deal um, of trade you know, Iranian rockets and drones to Russia and manufacturing facilities to the Iranian companies. Something like that. Who knows? Okay. But I understand why the Iranians want to get into the Russian market. But I can't really understand the Russians who downgrade from Samson to Datis and Emerson silently and take it without saying anything, you know. Do they like that? Russians, what the heck is the matter with you? Emerson and Datis from Iran? Not even from China, from Iran. Gosh. Well, good start of the week news, huh? Well, I have some more for you coming. Penny saved, penny earned. In our case, many, many pennies saved. 10 billion US dollars to be exact. But that's not saved by Russia. China has saved almost $10 billion this year alone due to the record discount of purchasing Russian oil. China saved $10 billion. And it means Russia lost $10 billion. And that's happened due to the decision of one person who likes the Chinese and helps the Chinese. Well, I just wonder... Is he the president of Russia or China? But it all makes perfect sense. If you watched the live stream I did yesterday called Russia is China Ficating. You know, I'm going to put the link right here. And let's move on to the next news. The new next news in Russia is actually a good news. Uh, believe it or not. For the Russians this time, not for the Chinese, <laughs> not for the Iranians. Folks, forget those $10 billion, you know, it's just peanuts, you know, no big deal. $10 billion that Putin made uh, a present to China. The good czar does not forget about his own people too. That's right. The Russians are up for pay increases very soon, this coming year, in a couple months. The maximum amount of unemployment benefits in Russia, yes, there are unemployment benefits, so... In 2024, it'll be increased to 13,751 rubles. And the minimum will be increased to 1,613 rubles, according to the Minister of Labor, Anton Katikov. The increase is a whopping 1,000 rubles. 1,000 rubles, folks. This is not peanuts. 1,000 rubles celebrate good time come on come on i this is how all russians who are unemployed this is what i can be that this is what how they're gonna be dancing you know oh, a thousand rubles <laughs> well <laughs> you're probably confused what is thousand rubles <laughs> let me give you the numbers in u.s dollars the maximum pay increase um was from one hundred twenty dollars, that's thirteen thousand rubles, you know, to one hundred thirty dollars from one twenty to one thirty, because one thousand rubles currently is a little under nine dollars. Uh, well, it's for the simplicity sake. Let's say let's say it's ten dollars, and the minimum pay increases. $15 to $16. 15 to 16 That's $1 increase. One, one, $1. This is, this is insane. <laughs> Folks, I'm not joking, okay? This stuff is real. I mean, it's not written by comedy writers but right it's it's real this is what they have in russian news that's the official news release of one of russia's ministries i think that people in the russian government 
they think they hate the Russians and they troll the Russian people as much as they can, you know. You see, I don't believe in the reptiloids, but if I did, I'd think that the reptiloids have infiltrated the Russian government. Otherwise, how can you explain this stuff? Moving on. The Ministry of Economic Development believes that by 2030, the need for workers in agriculture, trade, finance, and real estate and insurance industries will be greatly decreased in Russia. Folks, for once, I actually agree with the Russian government, with one of its agencies, you know. Yes. Yes. Fewer workers will be needed in Russia by 2030. Only I think that um, this Russian ministry, they're just painting a rosier picture, so to speak. I think that um, that'll actually happen sooner than 2030. I think fewer people will be needed in those industries by 2025 for one simple reason. There will be fewer people in Russia than there is now. Many will be killed in Ukraine and many will leave Russia permanently, just like the 3 million that have already left. There will be fewer people eating less. Therefore, the agriculture will shrink and there will be fewer workers needed. Fewer people will need fewer goods and services, therefore the trade will decline, and then therefore the fewer people will be needed in the trade industry. Fewer people that will remain in Russia will have less money due to the collapse in economy, therefore the finance industry will also shrink, therefore they're not going to need as many bankers, you know, financialists, whatever. Same goes for the real estate and for the insurance. Fewer people equals fewer places to live needed and to insure. Therefore, all those industries will shrink and Russia will indeed need fewer workers. Well, you Russian government, um, you do speak the truth sometimes. I gotta admit it, you know. And we listen. Matthew eleven fifteen. He who has ears, let him hear. And us, we're moving on. Oh, the next news is uh, definitely crazy. That's quite something. You know, I have the biggest difficulty talking about the news. You know, there are crazy news. And there are horrible news. But when they are combined and some Russian officials brag about horrible news, that I don't know how to present them. And this news is definitely is from this category, okay? <clears throat> this is something that the Russian government is bragging about. Let's hear what Maxim Reshetnikov, the Minister of Economic Development and one of uh, Putin's top, you know, economic advisors. He's on TV all the time reporting to Putin directly. Let's hear what he recently said. I quote, the share of friendly countries in exports from Russia has doubled since the beginning of the last year, and the payments in American dollars have decreased by three times. Now, for the once economists out there, which countries are considered friendly to Russia now? Not many. They are Iran, North Korea, India, and China. Their trading share doubled. It means the share of the old trading partners, the good ones, the best trading partners that Russia ever had, such as, for example, European countries, you know, has fallen by half. Uh, the new friendlies in, the old friendlies out. But the new friendlies are crap, the old friendlies are gold. Okay, well, that's uh, not much to brag about in my books. But hey, you know what? That's not the end of the news. Let's uh, move forward. The second part, all, all payments in dollars have decreased by three times. 
Now, payments in dollars have decreased by three times. That's an economic disaster. Wow, just wow. American dollar has been replaced by rupees and yuans that cannot be spent anywhere but in the countries that issue them. In other words, now Russia, for all its exports, receives one-third in real money in the U.S. dollars and two-thirds in monopoly, funny money that it cannot spend. So you understand the craziness of this situation? This is what the Indians recently suggested the Russian government do with the rupees paid for Russian oil exports and kept in Indian bank. Indian banks, you know, Russians cannot spend them. Those are just basically Russians are pumping oil to the Indians for free, right? And that funny money are sitting there and there's not much the Russians can do with them. Now the Indians come out and then they say, hey... We come up with a number of infrastructure projects in India that the Russian government can finance and invest into. And in some years, those projects might bring the dividends. Indian infrastructure projects in India financed by, by Russian taxpayers. I hope you understand this the abyss of this craziness. Russian people, how, how can you be so stupid not to understand that not only your money is being stolen right out of your own pockets with help of your government, but also the entire world is laughing at you and the Indians and the Chinese are twisting you around their fingers. What the hell? How stupid can you be? And uh, let's move on. Whew. India and China. Oh, yeah. Just love those countries. The new friends, you know, Russia's new friends. Yeah. I want to be a friend of Russia like that, you know. Um, India and China, they've showed the world how to get free oil. And everyone has kept taking notes, okay? Um, India and China has shown how to get Russian oil and to pay Russia with own funny money. And Pakistan is trying to jump on that train. Pakistan, they're smart too, you know. Pakistan wants to import 10% of its needs as a country, needs for oil from Russia. And Pakistan wants to pay for the Russian oil in its own currency, not in the U.S. dollars. Yeah, well, well, might as well. I mean, we're doing it to the chi to the Indians, to the Chinese. Well, at least we can spend some yuan, you know, because we're doing lots of trade with China. But with Indians, <laughs> you know, might as well do it with Pakistan. We have so much oil that we're just giving out for free. You know, come on, let's do it. More funny money, monopoly money coming to Russia. Moscow, the funny money capital of the world, you know. How about that for the new name? Uh, you know what, folks? Stop. Stop, stop, stop. I just came up with this brilliant idea. How about I, Constantine, will start dealing, importing Russian oil from Russia for my own goods, you know, for my own needs. And I'll pay with uh, my own money to Russia. 100 Constantinos for a, bale, a barrel of Urals. <laughs> Let's do business. How about that? How do you like this idea? Let me know in the comments. No problem. I can pay more. I can, I can, I can give really good price. Man, Constantinos, I can give 1,000 Constantinos for a barrel of Russian oil. Uh, 10,000. Gosh. Let's negotiate. Russians, come and sit at this table. Let's do it. <laughs> And this, the next news is coming from the, <laughs> the Mr. Newsmaker himself, you know. Um, let me quote. Well, this news is not to the Russians. It's more to the Europeans. It's a message to the Europeans. 
I know that lots of people from the UK, from France, from Italy, from Spain, you know, from European countries, from the Eastern Europe, Croatia and Yugoslavia, they're watching me. Um, let me quote Vladimir Putin. The European Union countries are trying to completely abandon Russian oil and gas. As a result, their economies are at zero. First of all, not too long ago, Mr. Fakemaker told us that the European countries would collapse without Russian oil and gas. And now he's saying they are at zero. So they haven't collapsed, have they? The Germans are not too cold and freezing to death and not eating their pets, huh? Like you showed us in the commercials all over Russian TV. So that hasn't happened, has it? A liar, you lied again. Ooh, I feel real bad for the Europeans, you know, with their zero economies. You know, poor people. Uh, how are you living, folks? You know, look at yourself and look at Russia. Look at the Russians. The Russians are swimming in money and opportunities, great opportunities that are in Russia. Now, Russian ruble is record high strong, getting stronger by the day. Investments are overflowing, and the Russian government doesn't know what to do with the money. Consumption is growing, production is at record levels, and overall, Russia has a bright future. Unlike Europe, Europe is so yesterday, you know, zero economies, Europe is done. Let's move on to the next news. Another economic news, and that's a um, real strange one. <laughs> Folks, this is, um, I told you, you're going to like the news. Uh. You know, when I prepare this news, I just go, wow, just wow, when I read them and translate them. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying, this, is, this news is wow, wow. It came from Anatoly Popov, deputy chairman of uh, the board of the largest Russia's bank, um, what you call it, Sberbank, Sberbank, Sber, whatever they call them themselves. So I quote Mr. Popov, prices for Russian electricity for both industry and consumers are four times lower than the prices in Europe. That creates a significant opportunity for Russian exports and increases competitiveness of Russian goods on international markets. Ba -ba 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 -bum. Does Anatoly Popov even live in Russia? Does he know what's happening in Russia? Obviously, he does not. So I explain it then to him, and you can listen to. Russia has been waging a war on Ukraine. Russian economy is in real trouble. The international community doesn't want to import anything from Russia, including electricity. And it's not that easy to uh, export electricity for Russia. It can only do so into the neighboring countries. And it's hard when you are waging a war on your neighboring country that used to buy lots of electricity from you and kind of like supply them electricity and then demand payments. It's kind of crazy, don't you think? On top of that, Russia can only export what it finds and extracts from the planet Earth, you know, from deep down drilling and putting up and selling, because Russians can't do anything else. Russia does not produce anything, does not produce. It, it buys everything to China. It sells whatever it extracts to China and to other countries. And then Chinese have factories, they, you know, they process things, they make things, you know, and then, then they sell things, products to Russia. So, Popov, what, what products are you talking about? What competitiveness? What competitive advantages in the world are you talking about? You know, the, the we... Ah. <sighs> Kids, if you're watching this, always stay sober. That's what vodka and drugs do to you. <sighs> By the way, if you're liking this news, please help me spread this message by making reposts on your social media accounts. Thank you. That really helps. You know, <clears throat> I know that lots of you drive cars, and I think that I, I think that lots of people who watch me, they like 
you know, cars in general. So quick automotive news for you. New Chinese car manufacturer brand is entering Russian market. It's called Orra. Orra. The sales of Orra Model 3 electric vehicles will begin shortly in Russia. The quality is expected to be, as usual, crap. And the price for the Model 03 Orra is expected to be, as usual, sky high. The Chinese, as usual, will benefit. And as usual, the Americans will be blamed for everything. My fellow Russians, Orra is coming to the garages near you. And we are driving on. Whew. Russian government has released its forecast for the price of natural gas for domestic consumers, for real people, Russian households. In July of next year, the record rise in gas prices is planned by the Russian government. Wholesale gas tariffs for all consumers from July 2024, that's after the elections, presidential elections, you know, not before, after. So the prices for uh, the, all the tariffs for all consumers will be increased by 11.2%. And starting July 2024, additional 8.2% increase. Uh, I think I missaid that. 11.2 in July 24, which is next year, and additional on top of that, 8.2% increase in July 2025, the next year. Well, <clears throat> that's a lot, because a lot of Russians depend on natural gas to heat their houses, okay? And a lot of Russians are very poor, so every single raise in gas price spells disaster for them. So that's a lot. Is this an unusual news forecast? No, it's expected. Russian government needs to make up all those lost sales of natural gas to Europe, to, you know, you, what used to be a friendly good customer and now no good bums. So, but they don't buy our oil and gas anymore. So, uh, Russian government needs to make up all those lost sales. Therefore, Russian taxpayers, and they are the rightful owners of all Russian gas, just, you know, don't forget about that. So the Russian taxpayers will be paying more for the natural gas. Easy. My fellow Russians, that's the price you pay for your political inactivity. For the war that your government is waging on Ukraine. For having such government. So think about it. Let's move on, friends. Very interesting news came from a top Russian official. Alibek Basiev. This is a good one. It's a personal story, kind of, that made national news. One of the top managers of the national treasury, that's where all money is, Russian money is kept. Um, his wife, you know, them together, were scammed of 15 million rubles. That's around $100,000, $160,000. In late September, Basiev received a text message on his phone, allegedly from the head of the National Treasury, the big boss. His alleged boss warned Basiev that he would receive an important call from the Ministry of Finance soon. And then a person called, allegedly from the Ministry of Finance, and informed them that KGB is was investigating a case of large-scale fraud among Treasury employees that also somehow concerned Basiev. Well, basically, Basiev was blackmailed and demanded a payoff, a bribe. Simultaneously, they did the same thing to Basiev's wife, who is a high-ranked employee of the Ministry of Finance. So it's like a heist on the family, right? And the payoff... Uh, was made, meaning both Basiev's, uh, the Basiev and his wife, were afraid of something and were trying to hide something, and so they paid the scammers 15 million rubles. Later they understood that it was a scam, and they must have talked to people, oh, you called me, I didn't call you. 
what do you mean? There's a message. That's not from me. My phone was stolen or something like that. So they realized they were scammed and they went to police. And now, right now, the real KGB <laughs> is investigated the scam. <laughs> Folks, you know what? This kind of people... Uh, it's actually quite unbelievable. <sighs> this kind of people are in charge of Russia's money. <sighs> oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, the National Treasury. The Basiev is one of the top managers, like deputy or something like that. <laughs> and his wife, he's in Ministry of Finance. Where the Russian taxpayers keep their money. If I were a KGB investigator, you know, um, investigating this case, I would ask three questions first. First, <laughs> what were Basiev's so afraid of in the first place to pay the amount they were extorted for? The second question, where did the Basiev's come up with 15 million rubles stashed somewhere under their mattress or under the pillow if they are government employees with fairly low income and it's really easy to check 15 million rubles is a lot of money and number three the question number three i would ask them directly you know probably the first question the bossiers are you stupid <laughs> why after understanding and it was scam why did you have to go and file the police report? So now you're going to be investigated and your case is going to make the national news and you're probably going to get fired. Are you stupid or something? Again, that's kind of people in charge of the National Treasury of Russian Federation. Ooh. You know, folks, if... At this point, you're asking yourself, how can I help this channel? It's easy. The best way is to hit the like button or to buy me a coffee at buymecoffee.com or become channel's Patreon at patreon.com. Either way would be fantastic and much appreciated. The links are down below. Thank you so much. Let's move on. The last news of this week comes from the Ministry of Federal Police. Well... I find it extremely important, the news, I mean. It's one of those news that it's been mostly overlooked in Russia, in the media. Um, I find it a small, like a very important small piece of puzzle that when you put all pieces together, they give you a bit bigger picture of what's going on. It kind of like you feel the inner dynamics of what's happening in the country, Okay. Because you just, if you watch the news and, you know, it's they're not going to give you, they're not going to give you a picture of what's really going on. You got to, you got to investigate, you got to think, you got to analyze, you got to do this thing. So Russia has the federal police. Um, I just let me remind you, meaning every policeman you encounter on the streets of the country, anywhere, in a large city, even in the forest remote village, in a taiga somewhere, you know, uh, every single policeman takes orders from Moscow. Uh, what Russia has for police is America's nightmare. The orders are given from the Ministry of Federal Police, MVD, that's located in Moscow. All policemen in Russia have one goal, to follow the orders of their support superiors, you know, to the, or their officers, their bosses that come from Moscow. And that's it. All the policemen get paid from Moscow, obviously, because that the federal. So uh, in the USA, police serves to people, protects people and gets paid by people. In Russia, on the contrary, police serves the government, protects the government and gets paid by the government. Like I said, Russian Federal Police is America's nightmare. So the news came from the Ministry of Federal Police. A shortage of 100,000 policemen has been reported. That's not a joke, you know. 
currently there are supposed to be 770,599 federal policemen in Russia. And 100,000 out of them are missing. The reason for the shortage is given officially from the Ministry of Police is low salaries. Well, there's one truth and there's one lie in this message. The truth is that, yes, there are around 100,000 policemen missing. That's easy to fact check. There's official open data on that, you know. And the lie is that the policemen have low salaries. They are compensated quite handsomely compared to other Russians. Uh, so why there's a shortage? Let's think about it. You know, in my opinion, it proves that there is such a thing as good Russians. 100,000 people serving in police quit after the start of the war, and some most likely, you know, left Russia for, for good. The old ones are staying and serving, they're doing their work, but people aren't in a hurry to join. And this shortage is currently there. It exists. Not too many want to go and join the police force to protect the government, to use violence on regular innocent citizens. And it actually keeps my hope up. You know, it doesn't let that tiny light that I have for Russia and Russians left in my soul that is on, it doesn't let it die. Hopefully, we'll be seeing that gap growing. I sure hope so. I will definitely be watching and uh, monitoring the situation. And I'll keep you updated. Folks, and this is all for the news update today. I suggest now you check out another video I made documenting how I was leaving Russia for good. And I'm going to make the link available right here. Thank you so very much. As usual, Friday news update. Uh, no live stream chat. Just the message. Thank you for coming. Fantastic to see everyone here. I will um, see the sponsors and the patrons tomorrow in a private live stream that I'm going to be making. Um, today is our um, wedding anniversary and tomorrow's stream is going to be dedicated for that. So please come back. And everyone else, I will see you on Sunday. People, you are awesome and you rock. And before I sign off, I invite everyone to... Ask everyone to say along with me the usual, Carthago de Lenda Est. <laughs>